to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, got my linemate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over the uh, Stanley Cup final series between Colorado and Tampa. What a series it's been so far. Uh, my predictions is off a little bit. I was th- thinking it's going to be one to one. It's two nothing, two games to nothing right now in favor of Colorado. Matt, what happened in that game too? Because uh, Colorado had a rough game. You know what, man? I give credit to the Avs fans, man. That building was absolutely rocking. I mean, it's got to be awesome to play in front of all those screaming people. I mean, it's like the United Center back in the Dynasty days. And they came out flying, man. They put their foot on the gas, and they did not let up. I mean, seven goals against Vasilevsky. And... Whew, man, that that's not. I did not expect that. And I, to be honest, I'm surprised Cooper didn't yank him just to like say, "Hey, this isn't our game. Rest up. Let's get him in game three. He kept him in there the whole game, and uh, that was a weird one for me. But hey, tonight they came out flying, and so far so good. So I think Vasilevsky is back on track, which is which is a good thing for Tampa. Man, it's. You know, you would never think that Vasilevsky could could do something like that, you know, let somebody, I mean, obviously he's not perfect, but still, you know, n- normally he's like laser focused and he's, oh, yeah. he's just all about it. And he just, I think he just had a bad game. Oh, well, what's going on today? So as, as you're speaking, Corey Perry just buried, I'm, yeah, Corey Perry just scored this, his sixth goal of the playoffs. It is six to two. In the second period, with about four thirty left to go, Tampa, it's all Tampa Bay right now. Wow! Your role when your role players like Corey Perry and Big Rig, uh, Patty Maroon are scoring goals. <laughs> that and S- Steven Stamkos got the uh, got the go ahead goal, I believe. And you know what? He's very underrated. We talked about him maybe a week or two ago, and uh, he's dude. He's just an awesome player. I'm turning into a big fan of this kid. And like you said. His faceoff percentage is very underrated too. This guy can win you a big faceoff when you need it. Man, um, you know what? I was, um, I was gonna say because after these first two games, you know, obviously they didn't look good in that second game. I was like, man, I, I wonder if these guys, if it's just been too much, you know, too much hockey, you know, for the for these guys. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, like what's, what's going through their heads? Are they like, hey, we've only got four more games to, to win? And then again, you know, you got Colorado breathing down your neck, you know, and Colorado wants it. They're fully rested. You know, they've only played about what, um, 18 games. And what has, uh, what has Tampa, what has Tampa played? Well, Tampa, I believe Tampa went seven against the Leafs first round. Yeah. And that was a, that was a tough series. Yeah. And then the next series, I believe that they, they swept. Right. And then seven again. Ran into the Rangers. They went seven. No, I'm sorry. They went six, and you know it was the same thing. They're they're down two nothing, and uh, Tampa. You can't give them any life you, when you can put them away and go up three nothing on them. You probably had a chance to win, and uh, New York just they kept them in the game, and uh, that's not good. And it's the same thing now. I, I I think Colorado has had a golden opportunity to come out flying like they did, and now I mean they could have buried this team it's so hard to come back from three nothing but it looks like it's all Tampa right now yeah I, I gotta retract that statement I said that Colorado played 18 games they've only played what is it um what four four and uh yeah the, uh, six, five right it, oh yeah against Edmonton yeah no no I thought it was six against uh the six Blues. against the Kings right I'm trying to remember man yeah it's it's been a while they it feels like it was much forever hockey. ago <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe no. The Oilers played the Kings. I'm wrong. Yeah, I think they ran into Minnesota. I think they beat Minnesota. Then uh, St. Louis, I thought was the best team out of the West to actually beat Colorado, and they didn't. I, we all know what happened there with Kadri and Bennington. I right. thought it would have been a little bit different, but uh, I'm I'm very impressed with Colorado. They are so fast. They got uh, Nathan McKinnon's in the zone. Kale McCarr's in the zone. And you know what? I've been disappointed with Victor Hedman because I've been I've had this guy's back all year, and he's kind of he hasn't been good the last two series. I think he's I think he's tired. He's, he's reminding me of Keith and Siebes playing yeah. like thirty minutes a game. It's like, oh geez, is this is the playoffs over yet? I need to I need a break. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. It's brutal. 
So, it anyways, is. how do you see how do you see this going forward, Matt? How do you see this playing out? Well, I think Tampa will win their next home game. I think it's going to be two two, and I think we're going to go. It's going to come down to the first team to win away, an away game will win the cup. Wow. It's that last change in your matchups. It, it's huge, man. It's very, very underrated thing too to put your stick down second on a faceoff. I don't know if you know that the home team centerman can put his stick down second in a faceoff. So right. That's that's huge, and you got to take advantage of all the little things. And uh, I think the home teams are the home teams are going to win all their games, and it's going to be the first one that lets up. And I, I think Colorado is going to be. A little like, oh man, this team's very good. We're good too, but this team's good, and they're gonna—they might lose one at uh, home. Man, you know, it's like I want—you know—Sakic did such a great job of putting this squad together. You know, it kind of just seems like it's somewhat their time. You know, it took Tampa—you know—kind of a little bit to get to where they are. You know, in the yeah. um, being the juggernaut that they are, it took them a little while to get there. But it seems like Colorado's kind of a- arriving there now. And, you know, to be honest with you, you could even say that New York is maybe a, a few years behind to maybe getting somewhat dominant. Well, what do you think about that? Um, as for New York, I think uh, they're going to burn out uh, Shesterkin. I think they're going to do the same thing with Lundqvist. And it's eventually, I mean, he's going to be a really good goalie for the next couple of years. But... Um, yeah, I think I don't even think New York's that close. I I think they they were very lucky to their matchups. They they weren't playing against starting goalies. They had a couple third stringers against I believe it was Pittsburgh. They played a third string goalie and they they barely beat them. They did come back and win the series, but I think if Jari was in net, it would have been a lot different. Uh, and I think if Freddie Anderson for the uh, Hurricanes was starting the whole series, I think uh, I think that uh, Carolina would have faced Tampa in the um, East Final. Um, but as far as Colorado, I think they kind of remind me of the twenty uh, twenty. Uh, I'm sorry, 2009 Blackhawks. Like, okay. hey, we're we're very good. We're very good, but we're, we're going to run into Detroit right now who knows how to win and has won for many years, makes the playoffs every season. And, uh, and it, it's like a lesson. I think this is going to be their lesson year. And next year, I think they will be more of uh they will be a better contender, but I mean, they could surprise us and come away and win, but even the, even the 2015 Tampa Bay lightning, they remind me, they, you gotta, you're, you're going through the champs here, the guys that know how to win. And the Blackhawks, I mean, it wasn't even that close. I know uh, yeah. we beat them, I believe it was, what was it, uh, 4-2, game six they won the Hawks. Yeah, but, it was. Uh, it, it's gonna, I think the, the Avs need to learn how to lose before they can win. I know they've been losing in the first round, but this is a new animal to them. They're in the final right now, and they're learning a pretty good lesson tonight. Like, wow, we were up 2 nothing, and we kind of let, let our foot off the gas a little bit, and Tampa's... Uh, they're going to run up the score on us like we did to them the other night. Yeah, it makes you wonder, you know, it's like, man, if, if they could have really put it together and won tonight's game, and tonight's game isn't over. Going no, down three to over. No. Going down three to nothing is a heck of a lot different than being down two to nothing, you know? Well, Darcy Kemper has been pulled, and I'm not surprised. I think the other goalie, uh, France Francois or something his name is, I think he's pretty good. I think he might be the better one. He is younger. But uh, I've heard a lot of things about this this guy and, that I didn't know about. He's a, a big shit-talking goalie, which you don't really see a lot. Most goalies yeah. are very quiet, weird. I know when I played, I you know I would skate back and forth and kind of stare out in a, out into the nothing, pretty much. And <laughs> I keep my mouth closed. I even when guys would try to talk to you, you just you know whatever, dude. And if a guy, an opposing player, would bump in you, you just kind of smile at him and be like, "Yeah, I don't got time for you. I'm, I'm I got my own battle going on in my head right now. I don't have time for you." Stuff like that. But this guy's a—he's been a big uh, crap talker, and he just gave up uh, five goals. You know, and it, it doesn't look good when you're running your mouth and you're not backing it up with your play. So, I think he might have lost his net. And I think uh, the coach Bennett or, or G- Gerard Benner, or whatever his name is. 
he he's got his excuse now, like, hey, I'm putting my guy in, Joe. I tried your guy, but we're gonna go with my guy. Hmm. Hey everybody, this is from our sponsor, Manscaped. Use our code Shy Tomahawk. You get twenty percent off of anything off of the website. I have their, um, I have their their version four lawnmower and it's great it's got an led light on it i never thought that i would be <laughs> i never thought that i would be so excited for an led light i've got one on my makita drill it's great i've got one on this on my manscaped uh, shaver lawnmower it's great um it really comes in in handy and you know what they have other products on their website as well they've got deodorant they've got ball deodorant too if you need to use that if things are you know getting a little too out of hand but be sure to check out their website they've got a lot of products a lot of cool stuff too that 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 really works i use it um i think that it's great i was actually going to buy my own lawnmower before we got a sponsorship they contacted me right as i was about to pull the trigger i'm really i'm really glad that they did uh because it helped uh, save me some coin so do us a favor Go to the website, use our, use our code SHYTOMAHAWK on anything. If you want to get replacement blades, if you're already a Manscaped customer, if you've already tried their deodorant, Matt uses it. He says that it works out great. Uh, the, the ball deodorant works uh, pretty uh, pr- pretty good. And they've got toner. It's it's really great. So check it out. SHYTOMAHAWK uh, at Manscaped. Interesting, man. So... Do you have any uh, any child news for us? Because uh, I think that this this series is going to get uh, way more interesting. Um, you know, McKinnon uh, is is I think is going to be a shining star, and uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Yeah, I I think it's it's been cool to watch Kale McCarr. I, I mean, I, it's hard to root for these guys knowing that they're in the same division as yeah. as the, the Blackhawks and everything, but. I I I just I like Tampa. I've always liked Tampa. I I jumped on the Tampa bandwagon in 04 with the Javi Boulin, uh Vinny Le Cavalier, St. Louis. I, my grandma was from St. Pete, so she'd always send me you know Tampa stuff. So yeah, it's it's hard for me to root for Colorado, but d- dude, they're a very good team. Very fast, deep, you know, good good superstars, good role players. I think the goaltending is the weakest part, but I mean I, they still get wins, so it's. Uh, very similar to that 20, uh, 2010 team, dude, for the Blackhawks, I think. Mm. That's interesting, dude. You know, especially when you think of, uh, you know, older teams or, you know, say like maybe, um, you know, Detroit back in the day. Yeah, uh, I, I think the cool thing ab- about this team, I mean, they're they're young. They're still young. They're going to be good for a lot of years. Kale McCarr, I think he's like, what, 22 or something? Yeah, he's really so, young, man. And he's averaging like one point eight points a game or something and that that's amazing and i heard he's like number two behind bobby Orr over 20 playoff games played so that's just that's unreal and you you know we saw his numbers in the season 30 goals i think he scored yeah i mean who's the last 30 goal scoring defenseman was it like mike green or even <laughs> doug wilson you know it, it, i actually i think you're right i think it might have been mike green or you know what didn't uh eric carlson do it I don't think Eric Carlson was much of a goal scorer. I think he was more of a 70 assist man, you know, or something like that, or minus 20,000 man. But I, it's just, uh, it's, it's unreal that they have this. And you know what? And then they got that Devin Taves from the Islanders. Yeah. And they traded two first round picks for this guy. He's one of the best defensemen in the league. It's just what a steal by Joe Sackick, man. Right. I this agree. guy knows his hockey and, you know what? I was hoping the Hawks would get somebody like a hockey guy, like you know Joe Sakic, to kind of step in and run the team. Because these are, I think these are the best guys. You got Sakic, you got Eiserman. You just, there's just so many good hockey minds out there. But um, yeah, as far as the Blackhawks go, I, I mean, I'm still hearing some things about DeBrincat. I'm hearing Kirby Doc's name a lot, and so it, a couple weeks, man, it's gonna get crazy. I, I think it, I, I think at the draft, uh, Davidson could pull some uh, pull some moves up and really surprise the fan base. Man, <sighs> I don't know what's going to happen with this team. Man, it, it it's just I just don't see. I don't know what Davidson's thinking. Like I have my own path forward that I'm thinking about, but I, but I don't know what he's thinking. You know, yeah, or what he's looking. It drives to do. you nuts too. Yeah, it and does. To be honest, like if. If you're a bandwagon hockey fan in Chicago and they trade Debrinkat 
Kane and Taves, you're not going to spend money to go, are you? No. It, no I mean, that's not. the thing. I mean, you got to think of the business side, too. Right. And I think as for a business move, you, you want a stud that, you know, who's going to sell your jerseys. He's going to he's going to sell tickets like, hey, I want to see this guy play. Yeah. And I think Kaner and Debrinkat, man, they're they're the guys. I mean, right. they'll, they'll keep the building full. And I know Taves probably won't. I know Taves is kind of on some people's shit list, the way he's been talking and about I hate losing and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, well, step your game up. It's not like you're scoring 40 goals a year and we're losing. You're, you're scoring right. like 10. So, and he's been injured. I, yeah, but I, but I really think that uh, they should really think about the business side of this too. I know that he wants assets and stuff, but you know what? I... If you're unless they give you something remarkable, I don't think I'm trading Kane. Right. I, I mean, he's. I'd rather see the guy retire as a hawk. You know, the the next like the next season, the first opening night game, you're raising that banner up 88 forever. You know, that's right. just uh, that's just how important he is to the organization. Right. Yeah, I I agree. It, but and you know, here's the you know the other thing you know is that you have fans that. You know, some of these bandwagon fans did turn into, you know, big hockey fans. And because of that, they, you know, may have came on at a time where the Hawks are winning. That's all that they've known, you know. So they don't know what it's like to be a fan of a team that has a has a history of losing, to be honest with you. And they want to see success now and they want more cups now, you know. And I, I just don't think that that's feasible as of right now. Um, you know, I think like along with what you're saying, kind of letting these guys ride off into the sunset and then, you know, kind of taking it from there, you know, might be the way to go. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. I, I think that, uh, you know, just do what's right for the, the organization, but you got to, you got to think of the business side. I mean, you, you if you're not selling, if you're not selling tickets, and it's going to turn into like the dark ages where we're signing Matthew Barnaby and Marty Lapointe <laughs> as our free agents, there no one's going to go. They're going to go back to the Wolves game with the family atmosphere and it, the minor league hockey vibe, which is okay because I, to be honest, I enjoy minor league hockey. I think it's great. The guys are working their asses off to get a job in the uh, NHL. They're trying to get noticed, and they give it their all. They really do, but. Yeah, I, I want to see the Hawks make some smart moves, business and hockey side, this summer for sure. Interesting. So, do you have any? Uh, do you have any NHL news for us? Uh the only th- like I was talking about earlier in the pod, I, and I was listening on uh, NHL radio, even with Jay Khan and Boomer today. They're they're like, since when is Darcy Kemper such a shit talking goalie? Like, and it just <laughs> makes me like think about any of those. Um, like the the past, like do you remember any goalies that would just smack talk during a game or not? Not really. I, I just, I mean, Eddie Belfour was nuts with that paddle. I know Patrick Wah was a nut, but I mean, it, I just don't remember like <laughs> Jordan Bennington. He's we know he's a little crazy too, but yeah, it just it's weird. I, I've never seen like a backup like goalie talk so much smack <laughs> in a wow. game, and yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe. Um, Patrick Waugh being probably the most outspoken goalie um, yeah. that, that I can remember. But as far as a, as a goalie kind of just being like the main shit talker out there, no, I, I, I don't think I could really name one. It's weird. I've, I've seen Corey Perry skate up to him, give him a hit, and he's still chirping him and turns around and whacks him in the chest. And it's crazy, man. It's like <laughs> old school. Hey, oh did gosh. we go? Did we go over John Tortorella signing with the Flyers officially? Um, I, I, I don't, don't know if we. I don't, I don't know if so. we did, but not, it wasn't official at the time. Not last Thursday. What do you think about that one? You know, man, he's. I think he's the right guy to turn uh, the organization around and make them winners. I, I, I would. I don't want to say winners to make them competitive. Uh, I think that he could do that. That's the kind of hockey that they they want out there. That's the kind of hockey that they uh, relate to. You know that kind of coach. You know I think that they would. Um, the fan base can really stand behind him, and uh, I, I think it's a win for for the Flyers organization. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think uh, any team he signed with it would have been a win for in my eyes, but. I think Philly needs a, a guy to, you know, kick these guys in the ass. And 
I, I've you know I've listened to a lot of podcasts. Uh, Missing Curfew with Shane O'Brien and uh, Scott Upshaw, and um, so Shane O'Brien actually was at a camp for him. I think it was when he was in Vancouver. He said the first week of camp was hell. I was out of shape. This guy absolutely works these guys until they puke pretty much. And he goes, if you're not ready for camp, you will not be on my team. And I think that's what Philly needs, man. They need uh, they need these guys to commit. Because the, fly- the NHL is better when the Flyers are good, man. The the Broad Street bullies, man. You, you want yeah. these guys on top. I, I mean, I don't, not, I, I hate them, obviously, because 2010, it was a battle. But... Uh, yeah, it's just better. Even the the rivalry between Pittsburgh and uh, Philly was great with Crosby and Giroux going at it all those years, hitting each oh, other. Yeah. And yeah. They were good wars, man. And even the 90s, Ron Hextall used to go after Mario Lemieux, Yager. It's just, it's better when Philly's good. When they're in the, you know, you know they're at the bottom, it, it sucks because they're too good of a team. Man. Um, how long do you think it's going to take for them to be, say, a player in the, in the uh, Eastern Conference? Well... I don't know. I'm still not sold on the goalie, Carter Hart. I mean, he's he's been, you know, he's supposed to be the next Carey Price, and I, so far I haven't seen any shades of that at all, not even close. So I, if Torts can push these guys and get them on a system and bring out the best in these young players, I think it could probably take maybe two to three years. But uh, the GM and him have to be on the same page. They have to uh, pick a team that benefits Torts and will help Torts, not you know sign like a guy that makes it, like zero sense for his system. Mm. Yeah. It kind of oh, actually, you... I, I'm sorry. I got one more thing happened today. Uh, Peter DeBora is now the Stars coach. It's really? been crazy. Yeah. So that's good, man. The, we don't have to worry about the Stars doing anything for the next three years because <laughs> that guy can't get it done. Yeah, yeah. That's. I'm glad that we didn't we didn't go for. Oh him. hell no! I'm so happy. I, I don't see the hype with this guy, and I, I mean Dallas is a pretty. I thought they were pretty good in the playoffs. I think they went seven games if I'm not mistaken. I, I think they lost in the first round, but they got some good young guys. Uh, Robert Jason Robertson, Rupe Hints, and why are you gonna bring in this guy who can't get it done in the playoffs? That's just it's crazy. Like he's been jumping around. I think he was with the Devils, the Sharks. Nights now he's with the stars. It's like, why does this guy keep getting hired? He hasn't done a thing, right? I just don't get it. That coaching, what do you call it? The coaching, the, uh, the coaching the revolving carousel. door. Oh, uh, yeah, he just uh, he's laid off for six days and he's hired already. It's crazy. I understand Bruce Cassidy for Vegas. I think that's the right move for Vegas. This guy will get him right. over, but hey, we got Barry Trot still available. I don't think he's gonna come, but. There's there there's still some hope even Rick Tockett. So as Hawks fans, we can only hope we can get one of these guys to jump on board. Because the same with Philly, as the Hawks, the the NHL is better when the Blackhawks are good. So yeah. let's get this going. Well, I don't have anything else, man. What about you? No, that's it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, period three is about to start. Hopefully, it gets a little nasty. Getting ready <laughs> for the next game. Put Patty Maroon out there with Corey Perry. Start agitating, getting Kale McCarr's face a little bit, give him a little uh, a little cross check to the back, a little slash to the back of the foot, you know? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> well, all right, everybody. That's all that we got for you tonight. Do us a favor, hit subscribe if you have not already. We're very appreciative for everyone who listens um, you know, every week. Thank you very much. We're very appreciative. We love you guys. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk, and we're out of here.